right guys in this video we're going to talk about a few more forces um some we've already talked about before some we haven't talked quite about um yet one of which is the normal force the others of which is the tension force we're also going to be spending a bit of time this week working on problems around these different types of forces um we're going to come back to force diagrams and we're going to make sure that we are good to go as far as um, how to do this stuff on an angle because all we're going to do is just insert the idea that if there's a net force in the x direction there can also be a net force in the y direction and we can solve information using that particular piece of um, knowledge. <laughs> uh, so forces are going to have a couple of different things that we can talk about. Um, we've already defined them as pushes and pulls, but other types of forces that are going to exist are things like friction, which we know acts in the opposite direction, weight, which is a result of gravitational acceleration pushing, pulling on something. Um, we can talk about thrust, which is the uh, force we've discussed with rockets, um, lifts, which are a similar idea, just kind of more hydraulic, um, and tension, which is something that's going to involve ropes and or elastic quantities. Um, we will be discussing a lot more elasticity and types of elasticity when we get more towards Hooke's Law in a future chapter. But for now, um, this particular section is going to talk about um, each individual force that is very, very important for us to know. First of which is going to be the normal force. So weight is going to be a force that, of course, pulls something downward. We've discussed this in the in terms of Earth, and I'm not going to go through everything that's on this slide in detail. I just really want to have a conversation about what normal is. Um, we've discussed it before, but really what it is is going to be a force that acts opposite of weight um, and is always going to act perpendicular to an object and its contact with a surface. So in other words, in this particular example, we see that the bag of dog food is going to have a flat, um, is going to have a flat interaction with a table that it's being placed on. Um, the weight of the bag is what's um, pointing downward. The normal acts opposite and perpendicular to the surface that it's on, which in this particular case means directly opposite of weight. Overall, right now, since the bag is not moving, one thing to note is that this is going to be an equal opposite interaction. So the net external force on this particular object is going to be zero because nothing is moving, nothing is changing direction, or um, nothing is changing motion. Okay? Um, from there, we're going to talk about how we can actually use um, the capital letter N to indicate a normal force and we've seen it on diagrams before just remember that it always means perpendicular to a surface that's the big takeaway here um i will uh ha i will uh aim to remind you of this at many different times when we're working on these problems uh for now just kind of don't get normal which is a symbol for a force um which is also a vector mixed up with the unit for force, which is Newton, also a capital N, um, just kind of a fair warning here. And here we have an example of normal being perpendicular to a surface. So here we have this skier who is going downhill. The normal force points perpendicular to the surface that is it, it is actually um, sliding down. And then the weight force always points directly downward. Here we have um, a skier on a slope. Her mass, including equipment, is going to be 60 kilograms. The first question is, what is her acceleration if friction is going to be negligible? And the first thing I want to point you towards is the free body diagram on the right over here. These particular problems, I'm going to make a separate video and go through how to do them. But for now, understand that the free body diagram has three forces. It's got friction, which acts opposite of the skier. It's got normal, which is perpendicular to the surface that the skier is sliding down. Friction acts opposite of the motion itself, so it is also on the same plane as the normal force. But weight is the one that acts directly downward. In this particular problem, we're given the angle. So if we wanted to, we could find the weight that's perpendicular to this particular um, this particular skier's uh, slope, and then we could also find the weight that's parallel to this particular skier's slope. That's what this this symbol means. W this W with like a two is actually a parallel symbol. So this is weight parallel, and this would be weight perpendicular to the actual surface. So the the two questions that are asked here is what is friction if um, 
I'm sorry, what is acceleration if friction is negligible, aka zero? And then what is acceleration if we then insert a force of 45 newtons? In order to do this, we want to figure out how to break weight into these two components given the 25 degrees and the 60 kilograms of mass. We know that W equals mass times acceleration, um, also known as G. And so we could figure out what the perpendicular and parallel forces are using our trigonometry principles that we've done in the past. Again, I will film another video that kind of goes through some of these problems in the future. Another force that we want to talk about is tension. So tension is going to be a force that is going to be carried along something. Um, you cannot have tension unless there is a connection between two, uh, say, objects or two parts. I want to say parts and not objects for a reason here and you'll see why. Um, a lot of times it's going to be a rope or a cable. The tension in a rope is going to be caused by the weight that pulls down on the rope. So usually if something, either the weight of the rope itself or the weight of the rope that something, or the weight of the thing that is attached to the rope, and that causes the tension in that particular object to even exist. Um, we're going to see a couple of different examples. One really good example is that in, in the body, um, referred to as tendons. So the tendons that actually are that are connected to your bones and your muscles that carry forces from one part of the body to another, those are all going to be types of tensions. Um, and so when we talk about tension, one of the most common forms of tension is again that in a rope. And what we can look at here is that there is always going to be a tension force. Remember that a tension force is just like any other type of force. There is an equal and opposite reaction. And so in this particular example, the system is going to be the block, and the thing pulling the block uh, opposite of weight is the tension in the rope. Different from the normal force, because if this object were um, on a table, then we would say that the tension force is more normal force. But in this particular case, we say that the tension force is the thing that exists because the rope is the thing causing the opposite of the weight force in this particular case. So then, of course, we can do what we learned with Newton's second law, where we can do the net force on something is equal to whatever the forces are that are acting. If in this particular case the object is not moving, then we know that the net force on that object must be zero, if and only if this object is not moving. Remember that its acceleration is also then zero. So anytime an object is stationary, remember acceleration is zero. Anytime an object is moving in a constant manner, acceleration is also zero. So net force is going to only equal ma if and only if the object is actually in motion and changing motion. Um, so in this particular case we know that the net force has to equal zero because we only have these two forces at play and the object is not moving. All right, so that being said, since this object is not moving, we know that tension and weight are going to end up equaling each other. We know F net is zero because the object isn't moving, and we know that tension minus weight are the only two forces that are at play as seen in this free body diagram that was provided for us. So in this particular case, then we can set tension equal to weight. We know the formula for weight is m times g because we've seen that before. We were given that this is a 5 kilogram mass and we're going to assume they're on the planet Earth because it didn't tell us otherwise. So we know that g is going to be 9.8 meters per second squared. So we can figure out what tension is, again equal to weight, going to be 49 newtons. All right. So other examples of tension force is really common. So the belt in a... a um, the belt in a bike, the uh, brake line in a bike is the actual area where there's a cable um, tension when you pull on the, on the brake on the handle, um, puts a stopper on your uh, wheel, which is actually how the bike stops. Another is going to be the tendons that we kind of mentioned towards the beginning. Um, when you are trying to bend your um, finger. There's a whole bunch of different forces in play here, but the tendon itself is what actually does the um, carrying of the force from one part to another of your particular body. Um, in this particular case, it would be your finger. Okay, um, from there we can talk about tension in different situations. So this first one is going to be tension in a wire. In this particular case, we're told that this 
person who has a weight is going to be standing in the center of the wire. We're given the angles at which the tension is actually taking place. We know that there are two tension forces acting on the system, the system being the person on the wire. Um, and our goal is to actually figure out what the tension is on the left and right wires. Now again, there's a slight angle. So in this particular case, anytime there's an angle, remember we can break everything down into components. Again, this is an example of something that I would go through and I would show you how to solve. For now, what we want to know is that there is a shortcut. We love shortcuts in physics. In this particular case, there is a way of calculating tension, knowing only in this specific situation. You can use tension when the forces that are being calculated, so the tension forces, are equal. In this particular case, the left and right forces are going to be equal. Yes, they're opposite, but they are also going to be equal values. And so since we know that's going to be the case, we can actually figure, we can use this um, shortcut formula of tension equal to weight over 2 times the sine of theta. In this particular case, weight's going to be m times g. We know what it is because we were told what the mass of the person was. Um, and then we can figure out, we were also given theta, so we could also plug that number in. All right, so that being said, we can extend this particular thing into perpendicular and parallel forces in this particular case. The perpendicular force is the one that's actually exerted in the middle. That's what we're referring to as this. Um, in this particular case, the perpendicular force that's being exerted is weight, so we can use that to our advantage. Okay, that being said, some different examples of tension out there. This one is a really common one. It's that of a bridge. So this is, of course, the Golden Gate Bridge. Um, it's referred to as a, sp a suspension bridge because it uses the idea that we can create tension to um, actually help distribute the weight on a bridge evenly. And that's really important if we don't want the thing to actually collapse. Okay. Um, from there, last thing I just want to kind of remind you of is this idea of real and inertial frames. And we're going to come back to this a few different times, especially next semester when we get into rotational motion. But um, in particular, I just want to remind you that there are these ideas of real forces and there are these ideas of frames of references. Um, and because there are these ideas of frames of references, in other words, the frame of reference in which you experience a force is very different and is going to have impact on how you see something happen. Um, and because that frame of reference is something that we have to deal with in physics, this idea of real and fictitious forces also has to come into play. Real forces are ones that we know exist, we can see them, we know there's an origin of them. Like we've, like our very big example is gravity. We know gravity exists. We can prove gravity exists. We know it's something that we can measure. Fictitious forces are going to be one that have to do with the frame of reference that an observer is currently witnessing. So the most common version of this is the difference between the feel that a person has on a merry-go-round, so something spinning, versus the person who is standing um, at the center of the merry-go-round. So if you've ever been on a merry-go-round, which if you haven't, I'm sorry, but if you stand in the center, you don't feel a pull unless you are actually outside of the center of that particular spinning object. That pull is a fictitious force, which is typically referred to as a centripetal, I'm sorry, centrifugal force. Um, the only person who feels that force is the person um, experiencing the motion from a certain point of view. And so sometimes we, we refer to these, uh, these fictitious forces uh, in physics, and we will come back to this again um, several times. But for now, what I want to make sure you understand is that there is a difference between real forces that we know have an easily identifiable origin and then a fictitious force that is something that is more difficult to describe the origin of. Um, I'm not saying those forces don't exist. I'm saying that they are a product of a specific frame of reference. And typically, it's an accelerating frame of reference. So when something starts to change, that's how that particular force kind of comes about. I know I'm not describing it well, and I promise that we will go over that in person over and over again because it's kind of an important concept. Um, but for now, 
this is the this is all for chapter four section five um i don't have anything more for you this is just kind of a wrap-up slide um what weight is and then there's actually a couple of formulas for how to calculate parallel and perpendicular but you already know how to do that um because you know how to break uh forces into components um so yeah this is just kind of a, a good wrap-up i will that is all have a great day